analysis for 8th of February 2024. Now, let us start with the today's agenda of the day, where in the editorial section, we'll be discussing how government wants to make movie theatre accessible for persons with visual and hearing disabilities. This particular editorial, we are discussing it from the Indian Express. Then we'll be discussing some interesting news update and then the legal news update of the day. Now, the context behind this particular editorial is the deadline for sending public comments on the draft guidelines for accessibility for hearing and visually impaired in movie halls expires next week. Now, once the guidelines are notified, film production houses and movie theaters will be mandated to either run dedicated shows of films for impaired or else ensures the provisions are made for them in theaters to be able to enjoy the movie going experience without any discrimination. So this is the particular context behind this editorial where the government are making guidelines for accessibility of the movie theaters to visual and hearing uh, impaired uh, people. Now, but, but first, why such guidelines are coming? So last month, the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting came out with the accessibility standards in cinema theaters for persons with hearing and visual impairment and invited the stakeholder comments on the draft bill till February 15th. These guidelines are applicable for those feature films that are certified by the CBFC, that means Central Board of Film Certification for public exhibition in cinema halls, movie theater for commercial purposes. The focus of these guidelines is not only on the content, but also on the information and assistive devices needed by persons with disability to enjoy films in cinema theaters. Now, the proposal quota section 29 and 42 of the right of person with disability, which mandates the government to take measures to promote universal access in the information and communication sector, including access to films for persons with hearing and visual disability. Now, as per the census, the data which has been released by the 2011 census, 2.21 of the total population of India has been marked as disabled, of which 19% are with disability of seeing and another 90% with disability of hearing. Now, what does this particular guideline propose? So the producer would be required to deliver two sets of films for certification. The original would be for the public view and the second with the accessibility features, that is audio description, open and closed captioning and Indian sign language interpretation. Now, cinemas have to ensure that feature films will be delivered for theatrical release mandatorily have both the versions being certified by the CBFC. Now, there are two opinions for the cinema halls to implement this, either to have dedicated days and timing of screenings with accessible services or using certain equipment in theatres during the normal show, which facilitates the impairment segment. Theatres have to offer accessibility features in a regular show by making available at least two equipment per 200 seats. Now, equipment can be smart glasses for displaying caption, installing closed caption stands near their seats, a separate small screen below a big screen on captions and subtitle, headphones, earphones for audio description, and using mobile app during the normal show and other technology. So there's a few, few equipment that would should have been in place for the theaters and the cinema houses. Now, films dubbed in more than one language would be required to provide at least one accessibility feature each of, for the hearing impaired and visually impaired within six months from the effective date of implementation of this guideline. All other feature films being certified through CBFC and meant for theatrical release would be required to mandatorily provide accessibility features from three years from the date of issue of this guideline. Now, owners and deterrents. Exhibitors have been asked to develop a self-regularity mechanism for providing the requisite number of seats with accessibility feature within a period of three years. Cinema owners, in consultation with the Organization for Disabled Persons, also have to train their staff to serve customers with disability, including explaining how they can find information about access service, assisting in booking of tickets. Now, Coming up to the license, authority will monitor the places under their jurisdiction to ensure provision of accessible seats. This shall be made mandatory after three years from the date of notification of the guidelines. In case of grievance, a person can file a complaint with the license of the cinema theatre 
in case of unsatisfactory response or lack of response from the licensee, the complainant may file the complaint before uh, before the licensing authority after a period of 45 days. Annually, the CBFC will also collect and publish information about different accessible services provided in a certified feature film. So, so these are something, you know, liable persons and liable authority that they have to make relevant changes to make the system in place. So this is all about the guidelines that are coming in and it will be finalized next week and so now, let us start with the national news of the day. Mukesh Ambani tops brand guardianship index 2024 among Indians second globally. So Mukesh Ambani, who is a chairman in the MD of Reliance Industries, has been, has been ranked first among all the Indians and second globally in the brand guardianship index 2024 compiled by the brand finance. Now, let us understand this index. So index is a recognition of the CEOs who are building business value in a sustainable manner by balancing the needs of all the stakeholders like employees, investors and wider society. Mukesh Ambani was placed at the second position globally in the 2023 ranking as well. Okay, shall you? Google to rename AI chatbot Bard to Gemini introduced paid tire. So Google is reportedly planning to rename its AI, that is Artificial Intelligence, Assistant Bard to uh, Gemini. According to a news report, the software giant would call Bard AI as Gemini, matching the name of the foundation model, powering the assistance. Now, Gem Gemini Ultra announced last year is the largest and the most capable system on Gemini 1 model. Kazakhstan president appoints a new prime minister to replace the one he dismissed. So Kazakhstan president appointed his chief of staff as the new prime minister the day after he dismissed the Central Asian country's government. Now, President Kasim Jomat Tokawev had criticized the ministers last year and blamed the cabinet for failing to stem inflation. Semelo was named Prime Minister in the wake of violent protest in 2022 that left 225 people dead. Justice Nawab Salam and Justice Julia Sebutinde elected as President and Vice President respectively. So Justice Nawab Salam, Lebanon, along with Justice Julia, Julia Sebutinde from Uganda were elected as the Prime Minister and Vice President of the International Court of Justice by their peers for term of their three years. Justice Nawab Salam was born in Buret, Lebanon and has an extensive experience in law with primary fields of practice in general litigation, public and private international law and international transaction. Justice Julia Sebutende is born in Uganda. Her expansive legal resume includes judgeship of the Special Court for Sierra Leone, Presidency Judge of Trial Chamber 2 of the SCSL, and handling several high-profile war crime trials, including Prosecutor versus Charles Ganke Taylor, judgeship of the High Court of Uganda, to name a few. So it's a very important, very important appointment for your examinations. Israeli scientists find new underwater canyon near Cyprus. So Geological Institute of Israel has recently made a groundbreaking discovery near Cyprus, uncovering an underwater canyon of unprecedented precedent proportions. Now, named Eratosthenes after the nearby underwater mountain, this canyon sheds new light on the geological history of the Mediterranean region. Now, coming up to the legal update, which is coming from the Supreme Court. Supreme Court has recently, while affirming the life imprisonment of three accused appellants for murder, modified the sentence of another accused to culpable homicide and sentenced him to 10 years. Now, the court has held here that common intention cannot be inferred um, mechanically based on the present situation and the present that the person was present near the crime scene. However, the court noted that there is neither oral or documentary evidence to attribute A3 with the intent of murder. And the case name is Velthepu Srinivas versus State of Andhra Pradesh. Now, criminal justice machinery uh, by, used by certain person to achieve their oblique motives. The Supreme Court recently urged that the court to have been vigilant against such tendency. 
Now, the Supreme Court has made a big remark and stated that the High Court must exercise their inherent powers under Section 482 of the CRPC to quash the judicial, uh, quash the criminal proceeding in such case where the uncontroverted allegation prima facie don't establish the offence. Courts have therefore to be vigilant against such tendencies and, and ensure that acts of omission and commission having an adverse impact on the fabric of society must be nipped in the bud. And the case name is Vishal Noble Singh versus State of Uttar Pradesh and another. Now, guys, if you want to revise your previous TNA, do attempt the daily quiz link that is mentioned in the description of this particular video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.